if you've visited our channel before, you know the drill with this video. If you haven't, welcome, and please join our community by becoming a subscriber. We love to take video tours through amazing and interesting archaeological discoveries. And in this particular video, we're going to look at the very best discoveries made recently. Let's get started. We begin in England, where an incredibly well-preserved flute made of animal bone was found in Hearn Bay, Kent in November 2022. According to experts, instruments like this are known as flipple flutes and were popular between the 13th and 15th centuries. It's hard to be certain about the animal that the bone comes from, but it's a tibia, and it's likely to have belonged to either a goat or a sheep. The flute would also have had a mouthpiece, but sadly no such object was found with the artifact. It's conceivable that the loss of the mouthpiece might have been the reason it was discarded in the first place. The flute is in such good condition that we can still clearly see the five finger holes that were drilled into the bone by its owner, plus the thumb hole on the other side. Along with the bone, archaeologists at the site also found some fragments of medieval pottery, which helped them to date the discovery. This is part of an ongoing search of a large site, so there might be more news to come from Hearn Bay soon. When we think about a message in a bottle, we tend to picture it bobbing around in the sea or washing up on a beach. You probably wouldn't expect to find one under your floorboards, but that's where one turned up in Edinburgh in November 2022. Homeowner Elid Stimson had called a plumber to do some work in her bathroom and the job involved opening up a section of the floor. When the plumber did so, he found a message that had been left in a whiskey bottle 135 years ago. After carefully opening the bottle and extracting the piece of paper inside it, she found a message which reads, James Ritchie and John Grieve laid this floor, but they did not drink the whiskey. Whoever finds this bottle may think our dust is blowing along the road. The message is dated October 6, 1887. The meaning of dust blowing along the road is uncertain, but it may be that James and John expected to be long dead by the time their message was found. As it turns out, they were entirely correct. Archaeologists in Datong, which is in Shanxi province in China, recently discovered a cluster of undisturbed ancient tombs. They've been going through the tombs one at a time, but it's what they found in tomb 113 that's caused the most excitement among the country's experts. The tomb was found to contain dozens of burial goods, including a unique set of terracotta dancers, musicians, and other carefully posed tiny figurines. Prior to the arrival of the archaeologists, the tomb had been sealed since somewhere around the year 480 placing it in the middle of the Northern Wei Dynasty. What's so unusual about the burial figurines isn't just how unusual their poses are, but how many of them there are. Behind the figurines we've already mentioned, the team found a further set of earthenware laborers and animals, flanked by pottery horsemen and bullock carts. The quality of the collection suggests that whoever was buried in the tomb was somebody of great importance, but there's a curious lack of inscriptions or other identifying material. We'll regrettably probably never know who he was, but the search continues. There are no guarantees of success when you go out into a field with a metal detector. You can take part in the hobby for your whole life and never find anything interesting, or you can strike gold on your first go. 13-year-old British schoolgirl Millie Hardwick of Suffolk, England, didn't quite strike gold on her first go, but she was close enough. On only her third trip out with her device, she found an incredibly rare haul of Bronze Age axes and other artifacts dating back 2,300 years. She was out in a field in Hertfordshire with her father when she came across the find, which professional archaeologists have deemed to be a once-in-a-lifetime discovery. That's probably not the sort of thing Millie hoped to hear at the age of 13. The coroner's office now has to decide whether Millie's axes qualify as treasure. If they do, it's likely they'll be bought by a museum and Millie will be paid a finder's fee. If not, she'll be allowed to keep her discoveries. Either way, it's a good start to being a metal detectorist for Millie, 
who hopes to become a professional archaeologist when she leaves school. Kalmar is a city in the southeast of Sweden, and its location is so strategically important that a war was fought over it between 1611 and 1613. The Kalmar War was a conflict between Sweden and the unified nations of Denmark and Norway, and this recently discovered sword was used as a weapon in it. The long-forgotten blade was found in Kalmar at the bottom of a stone cellar, which might once have belonged to a farm that existed here during the medieval era. The farm was attacked during the war and burned down in 1611, but the fire and ash helped to preserve things trapped beneath it. Experts in Sweden say that the sword is significant because it demonstrates a leap forward in sword-making technology. The style of the weapon would have been brand new at the time it was lost, but it became the template for sword designs that dominated European battlefields throughout the 17th century and until more advanced weapons made swords obsolete. As for the war, it was briefly won by the Danes, but they were never able to quell the people of Kalmar, so it was handed back as part of the peace treaty that brought the conflict to an end. We're heading back to England now for another metal detectoring discovery. David Board, a retiree, was a metal detectorist in his youth, but gave up more than 40 years ago before picking the hobby back up again in 2020. He's glad he did, because in November 2022, he found a beautiful medieval love ring made of gold and finished with diamonds. David made his discovery in a farmer's field in Thorncombe, Dorset, and could scarcely believe his luck. The engraving has helped historians to trace the history of the object. It's 600 years old and was gifted by Sir Thomas Brooke to his wife, Lady Joan Brooke. Sir Thomas could afford such lavish gifts as he was a member of Parliament, serving between 1386 and 1413. The inscription on the inner ring is in French, but translates into English as, As I hold your faith, hold mine. The big question is how such a valuable ring came to be lost in a field. Mr. and Mrs. Brooks never divorced, so it's unlikely that the ring was thrown away. Whatever the reason, it's now valued at around $50,000. It would have been easy to forgive archaeologists if they'd overlooked this next discovery. It comes from an ancient burial ground in Halternamse, Germany, where it was found in early 2020. But when it was discovered, it was nothing more than a rusted chunk of metal with an uncanny resemblance to a chicken tender. Fortunately, 19-year-old student archaeologist Nico Kalman had a feeling that something valuable might be hiding beneath the rust and corrosion. It took nine months of careful grinding and sandblasting to prove him right, but when the experts completed their work, they found themselves looking at a beautiful 2,000-year-old Roman dagger still in its original decorative sheath. Thousands of Roman soldiers were stationed in the area during the 15-year Roman occupation, and hundreds of their graves have been excavated. But this is the only dagger of this design that's ever been found. It might be that the occupant of the grave was a captain or leader. Unsurprisingly, the find has now been taken under the protection of a local museum, where it's been on public display since the start of 2022. Shall we have another story about a lucky metal detectorist? Well, why not? Earlier in 2022, Jason Willis of Lincolnshire, England, found a medieval gold cross while skimming a muddy field in Sutton St. Edmund. In November 2022, Jason's find sold at auction for £12,400. Experts say that the cross was most likely made in either the 11th or 12th century and have named it the Throckenholt Cross. Complicated treasure laws in the United Kingdom often mean that finds like this automatically become the property of the British Crown. But in this instance, the cross was returned to Jason after an evaluation, which gave him the freedom to sell it. No cross like this has ever been found in the country before, but its style is consistent with relics associated with Greek Orthodoxy, and a single, similar cross was found a few years ago in Denmark. Sutton St. Edmund isn't that far from the coastal town of King's Lynn, which was an important trading center during the medieval era. The cross probably entered the country through there. 
Whoever lost it would have cursed their luck, but Jason did the exact opposite when the money came in. Ulukak Mound in Anatolia, Turkey has become a rich hunting ground for archaeologists over the years, and in August 2022, it came up trumps again with the discovery of a tiny female figurine. The miniature sculpture is thought to be around 7,800 years old and is made of clay. It's unlike anything else that's been found in the mound before, and experts aren't sure what to make of it. One theory is that it was used in fertility rituals, or as part of a prayer ceremony conducted in the hope of ensuring a good harvest. But artifacts used in this manner are usually dumped into rivers or buried as votive offerings. That doesn't seem to be the case with this little figurine, so alternative theories include the idea that it might have been used as a magic totem during birth rituals. Ulakak Mound is significant because it was home to the very first farmers to live in the Aegean region, building their houses and starting a chain of human occupation that continued uninterrupted for 1,200 years. They left plenty of archaeological evidence of their lives behind in the ground, and yet we still know so little about them. Most of us know what a head lice comb looks like through bitter experience, whether that's as a child or with our own children. Lice combs have looked the same throughout history. Here's one of the oldest ones archaeologists have ever found, one that bears an inscription which might be the oldest inscription in the world. The comb and its inscription were found at a 4,000-year-old site in Israel that was once Lachish, a Canaanite city-state. It's made of ivory, and the words scratched into its surface are written in the oldest known alphabet. It says, May this tusk root out of the lice of the hair and the beard, which is, of course, precisely what a lice comb is intended to do. Deciphering and translating the letters on the artifact took Israeli archaeologists and experts an entire year, with the findings reported in November 2022. The Canaanite script is the oldest alphabet that exists in the historical record, and translating it is a slow and difficult task because our understanding of it is imperfect. Microscopic examination of the comb has revealed the presence of head lice in their nymph stage, so the comb was effective. Single Mayan stelae are reasonably common discoveries in the former South American territories of the Mayan Empire. Dual Maya stelae are far rarer finds, but a pair has just been found at the site of Uxmal in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Uxmal is already held in high regard by archaeologists and historians because it was where the signature Puk architectural style originated, going on to flourish in the late Classic period between the 6th and 9th centuries. The written history of the Maya suggests that the city was founded in the year 500, but the dual stella aren't thought to be quite that old. It was found in a sunken patio in the El Palomar architectural complex, which contains four palaces positioned around a courtyard. Both sides of the stella are carved, with the bulk of the space on the front taken up by a female goddess holding a quetzal and the reverse displaying a male god wearing a headdress adorned with feathers, and strangely, the head of an owl. Experts in Mayan culture say that the deities are representations of life and death, and that such depictions are typical of the Puk style and the Chenis cultural area. Of course, you don't have to be an archaeologist or a treasure hunter to come across something remarkable from the distant past. In October 2022, a beet farmer tending his fields in Opava, Chechia, was stunned to discover a unique Bronze Age era gold belt in a field he'd worked hundreds of times before. The belt was crumpled into a ball when he found it, but he thought enough of it to take it indoors, rinse it, and straighten it out a little. Professional archaeologists would probably rather that he hadn't tampered with it so much, but they can at least see that it's a remarkable find. The belt has been analyzed in the Silesian Regional Museum and has been determined to be made of 84% gold, 15% silver, and trace elements of copper and other metals. The decorative style of the diadem has been used to determine a date range for the artifact, 
which begins in 1400 BCE and ends in 800 BCE. While experts now mostly agree that the object is a belt, the object is so thin and delicate that it was initially thought to be a tiara. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.